How long does it take you to get naked? It's the South Pole. I wear a lot of layers. Any nose you can feel is one we can biopsy. Let's start with your breasts, move down to the ass. I'm starting with the anterior cervical nodes. I can hear that half. There are 479 rules on relationships with patients, and House just broke a thousand of them. Very excited to be reacting to House MD Season 4, Episode 11, Frozen, requested by one of our channel members, Fantine Vergnold. On this channel, we are reacting to all 177 House episodes. This will be Episode 92. Let's see if I can get the diagnosis before House does as a doctor working in London. Best way to repair your artery at this temperature. It looks okay. Blood flow looks good. Your legs should be okay. Two. Are you okay? I need help. Who am I supposed to get? And that is why you always take two doctors on your Antarctic expedition. Reminds me of a story I love to tell, Leonid Ivanovich Rogozov, also known as the man who cut out his own appendix. He was a surgeon on an Antarctic mission and got himself appendicitis as the only medical professional on board. Lots of people know about that case, but that isn't the only occurrence of self-surgery, even though the motivations have been diverse. They say there is a fine line between genius and insanity, and this story hits the line with a sledgehammer before setting it on fire. It's the 1920s and a new medical resident named Werner Forsman was studying medicine in Germany. He saw how much trauma heart surgery was causing and wondered if they could reach the heart using another method. He'd seen a case report of a vet who'd accessed a horse's heart using a line in their neck. He wanted to see if the same could be done in humans. When he told the chief of surgery his plans, they were immediately rejected because of safety concerns. So the surgeon decided to chat about his idea with a theatre nurse who then volunteered to be his patient. He strapped her to a chair, set up the procedure, and then started making the incision on his own arm. He then inserted a bladder catheter into the vein and pushed it into his shoulder by the time the nurse realized that the operation wasn't for her. A bystander then tried to stop him, but he wrestled them away and asked the nurse to get the x-ray machine so they could see how far in he was with his bladder. Eventually, he made it to the heart and for that, he was immediately fired. Clearly, he had a newfound love for catheters and he couldn't find jobs in any other surgical department, so he decided to be a urologist. 17 years later, and he was awarded the Nobel Prize for becoming the father of non-invasive heart procedures called catheterization. <laughs> Madness. New case. The patient's a psychiatrist. There's something wrong with Kumagai's cable. The budget committee voted to charge for cable in the patient rooms. Today we withhold porn, tomorrow it's clean bandages. The patient is trapped at the South Pole. Winds make it impossible to fly anything in or out. Could be a struvite kidney stone. It's possible. She's on birth control. If it's a struvite stone, she needs to break it up quickly before the infection shuts down her kidneys. These are the supplies and medications okay. she has available. Nothing here that could break up a kidney stone. Some geological equipment breaks ice and rock the same way we break kidney stones. I have absolutely no idea if you can use shockwaves to break up rocks and ice, but I know that for stones, they are shockingly good. Why is that? Well, shockwaves can break up the stone from outside the body without ever needing to put points T instruments into our delicates to reach even more delicate areas. It's far from perfect though. Think about this. Once a kidney stone is broken down into tiny little pieces, where do those pieces go? Do we just pee them out like nothing ever happened? Or can they get stuck in the tubes from the kidney to the bladder? The truth is both can happen. So how do we stop our shockwave dream turn into a stagnant nightmare? We only use it on small stones. That's why shockwave therapy is generally used for stones of two centimeters or less. But how does it even work? The shockwaves send thousands of pulses that can be pushed through the body, creating micro cracks, slowly getting bigger until it fails. Some stones are susceptible to this kind of external influence, but others like cysteine and calcium oxalate stones are very resistant. The team thinks she has a struvite stone which should be sensitive to this improvised rock ice human onslaught. Such a classic Kutner idea. Will it end in disaster like usual? Let's find out. 
Studies conducted in major hospitals indicate that happy patients recover faster. Charging patients for cables bringing in 13 grand a month. Until this injustice is righted, I am going to waste 13 grand a day. How much is 13 grand divided by four cents? We're almost ready to start the test. ER is standing room only, which means Cameron's bound to make a mistake. Find it so I can blackmail her. I am not doing this. Dr. Milton, are you able to run a Chem 7? Yes. Well, that'll tell us if her kidney function is declining. While we're waiting for that test to prove me right, start IV cefuroxime. Unless I give House cable, you're going to make my life miserable. Yes. House will get what he wants. Your Chem 7 results show that your kidney function is declining. It sounds like a kidney stone to me. You're breathing fast. My chest hurts. It's deviating to the left as your right lung is collapsing. Get a syringe and a needle. I want you to stab yourself in your right side between the second and third rib in the mid-clavicular line. Ah. Means it's not a kidney stone. Who needs cable TV when you have a full HD link to the South Pole? Also, the team mentioned that Dr. Milton is a psychiatrist. That would be last on my list of doctor types I want with me on a remote mission to a frozen wasteland. Well, except autopsy doctor. She has performed pretty well so far though, repaired an artery with glue, performed a shockwave experiment with a glass jar, and stabbed herself in the chest without puncturing her lung. The next thing you know, she'll fashion a wind-resistant helicopter from a fallen propeller, a filing cabinet, and a piece of old underwear. Adds a whole new layer of meaning to Calvin Klein's wind protection. It'll be hard to think about escape though until we know what she has. So far, all we know is that she keeps getting sudden severe chest pain, even though the conditions the team suggested earlier are more related to abdominal pain like appendicitis, kidney stones, or gallstones. Recurrent chest pain like this with a punctured lung could be related to alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. It's a genetic condition which causes enzymes to basically start eating your own lungs. It could also be a whole host of other things like lung scarring, asthma, injuries, or even lung cancer. But question for you smart people, what group of people classically get air leaks in their lung while fit and healthy? Answer this down below and I'll give you it at the end of the video. Cancer explains her symptoms. A tumor in her lung or kidney that threw a clot to the other organ. Since the only imaging equipment you have is x-ray, let's start there. X-ray your entire body. I'll upload the images when I'm done. She's annoying. Refuse to take the antibiotics because other people might need them. KUB is clean. Enlarged mediastinal node. Lymphoma? We'll find a node closer to the surface once you can biopsy. The x-rays don't show any other abnormal nodes. Abnormal nodes can be felt before they can be seen on an x-ray. Well, there's no reason you need to watch. I am not addressing for you in your apartment. Show me your place. I am not exposing myself without some reciprocity. Back up. Do you drink two or three scotches before passing out in front of the TV? It's bourbon. No photos anywhere. Family and friends aren't important. This is exactly what your boss thinks you're doing when you say you're working from home. The power dynamic here is all off. Is she a patient? Is she a colleague? It reminds me of when I went to work and I had this patient who was also ethnically Iraqi like myself. The first words he came in and said were, who is your father? I fell into the trap and did what nobody should do and answered the question. Then he asked for my name, which I was confused about because I'd already introduced myself. I repeated Dr. Messer and he said, no, your first name. At that point, all control of the consultation had been lost. This is why it's important as a doctor to be patient centered and not patient led. See, many times patients actually ask for treatments which aren't good for them. Like when I was in hospital and at 2 a.m. I was called to see a 28 year old diabetic patient who was angrily saying that she missed two insulin doses. Her sugars were already borderline low as she hadn't eaten much, but she wanted me to immediately prescribe all the insulin she missed, which was 40 units. I explained I could prescribe her what she wanted, but that would unalive her faster than you can say better call Saul. Well, not in those exact words. While these two are engaging in some kind of twistedly intriguing examination foreplay, we have a new clue, an enlarged lymph node in the chest. These things are surprisingly tough to spot on an x-ray as it takes a keen eye to pick them up, so they may become more common once AI software starts reading x-rays for us. So we know she had a tension pneumothorax and this node in her chest. The obvious answer here would be some kind of cancer that spread to the lung, but where's the story in that? We know she's a psychiatrist, she's on birth control, and she probably likes being alone, which is why she took a trip to the South Pole. What is she running away from? Maybe she got 
pregnant and needed to have an abortion. Or maybe she's on the pill to try and help control quite severe pelvic pain around her period. And that's caused by a condition called endometriosis. That's when the tissue that lines the womb runs away from its fleshy prison and ends up causing all kinds of havoc by sitting where it shouldn't be. That can be on the ovaries, outside the womb, on the bladder, or in very rare occasions, in the lung. It could cause an insanely rare condition called catamenial pneumothorax. Kata in Greek means by and men is month. So our patient could be having a period in her lung which caused this node to become enlarged when it isn't and led to her chest pain and punctured lung. That has to be my first diagnostic guess. It would just be insanely perfect. You get 20 people down the hall and you've had exactly one visitor. You don't like people. Stop projecting. How about if I just get naked and you shut up? You'd rather show me your soul than your leg. You gonna try and fix me now? I never said you needed fixing. How long does it take you to get naked? It's the South Pole. I wear a lot of layers. Any nodes you can feel is one we can biopsy. Let's start with your breasts, move down to the ass. I'm starting with the anterior cervical nodes. I can hear that ass. Just thought I might help you relax. Hold it. Fingers didn't go quite as deep. It, it's swollen. Looks like you're doing a biopsy. Okay. I'm in. Ah! You okay? You've slept with her. I resigned from the budget committee. She can resign, she can unresign. Go to DEF CON 1. How long do I let the lymph node marinate in the red wine? There are 479 rules on relationships with patients and House just broke a thousand of them. Also, have you ever tried to stick a needle in a lymph node? Those things aren't just straight stabbable. There's a reason why we do them on ultrasound. They're slimy and wriggly like trying to catch a slug with oil in your hands whilst riding a unicycle. Okay, maybe not that hard. Either way, she got herself a tissue sample which looks more like fluid from the chest than a node. But how will she examine it using Wilson's makeshift recipe for success? Red wine. She isn't making a beef stew though, so how is that helpful? If you'd ever looked at tissue under a microscope, then looking at unstained versus stained tissue slides is like comparing a video quality from a potato to a Hollywood super camera. That's because stains attach to different structures inside cells that help to highlight certain features that we're looking for, like gram stains, which stain some bacteria blue and some pink, depending on their cell wall, or Zeal Nelson stains, which bring up TB that doesn't show on the usual gram stains, or the usual hematoxylin and eosin staining of a lymph node to check for cancer which the team are trying to find a makeshift alternative to. I think red wine would actually be quite a bad stain as the alcohol inside is likely to distort the tissue and I doubt it would stick to undiscriminate cellular components enough to make it useful. So that bit I don't quite buy just yet but still loving the MacGyver level creativity going on here. Maybe this node is actually swollen because of that recent abortion and it's infected. That would still fit my first theory really well. Otherwise it could be blood cancer, which would be not so spicy. Try increasing the magnification on the camera. Based on this slide, you do not have cancer. My left side, it hurts. Um, I, I hope it's, it's something, um, it's maybe, ah, oh no. I'm screwed. Wilson found signs of inflammation in your biopsy, probably SLE or vasculitis. You practice medicine like it's a fire sale. Extreme cold has been used as treatment, like putting ice on a sprained ankle. Or ANA not... testing. People had autoimmune diseases. How did they know? Ellie Prep, but she doesn't have any control poor glass beads. If you have an autoimmune disease, your immune system will gorge itself on the damaged cells. Oof, an LE prep test now we're getting old school is similar to what House described, except the reason why the immune system starts to clump together is because lupus is due to antibodies to nuclear components. That's why the most specific test for lupus nowadays is against double-stranded DNA, which we release when we start shaking blood fragments with a sharp, hard object. It was phased out in the late 80s, early 90s when antibody tests were discovered though, but you may notice that there are some similarities with the said rate or ESR, but the difference is that uses whole cells which are undamaged and lets them sink into place, which we still use today as a general marker of inflammation. Foreman had a pretty interesting idea though, send her outside into the cold. It isn't a bad shout, 
as in all fairness, cold water therapy actually works in many different autoimmune diseases like MS, ankylosing spondylitis, and rheumatoid arthritis. And the episode title is called Frozen, so surely this cold must have something to do with how they treat her condition. But we know House is brilliant at misdirection, so what if the cold makes her better, but because of something other than autoimmune disease? It could help with some types of cancer, but the evidence isn't that strong. It potentially could also help with things like endometriosis as well, but in all fairness, the fact her lung and kidneys are now affected does fit quite nicely with vasculitis, particularly a type of vasculitis called granulomatosis with polyangitis or Wagner's. In the condition, your body starts to attack its own blood vessels, but why was it renamed recently? It's an honor in medicine to have a disease named after you, and Dr. Frederick Wagner was sadly a follower of the Nazi party during World War II and therefore stripped of the privilege. Either way, granulomatosis with polyangitis, as it's now called, will be my second diagnostic guess. Ellie prep test was negative. It's not autoimmune. There is another test. If you have an autoimmune disease, exposure to the cold should decrease your kidney pain. Are you all right? Oh, I'm sure she's just fine. It took the station mechanic 20 minutes to respond. Started on prednisone, but no improvement. Yes. If only she wasn't in a coma. We could talk the mechanic through the test. Too complicated, unless he's thirsty. Drink her urine. I know you know doctors actually used to drink urine to diagnose conditions, but you probably didn't know that this was such a refined art that we even had flavor wheels. It wasn't just about the taste, the smell and color were also used to identify different illnesses. This wasn't just a passing phase either. It was the reality of being a physician for over 2000 years as evidence for this stems back to the times of Hippocrates in 4000 BC, all the way up to the Victorian era. Even with all the issues society has, I'm definitely glad I wasn't born a century earlier or I'd be swapping my 7up for cloudy lemonade. That isn't the worst of it either. For the set menu today, we have an appetizer of urine tasting followed by some maggot therapy with a main of ice pick lobotomies and dessert is our most popular dish electrocution to the brain. In all fairness, some of these are still being used today, but much more rarely than before. Well, let's see the verdict of this tasting session. Uh, it should taste kind of watery. Either increase intracranial pressure or something's wrong with her hypothalamus. You're gonna drill a hole in her skull. If she regains consciousness, it's increased intracranial pressure. But if it's the hypothalamus, she's dead anyway. I can't do this. This is her only chance. Bones harder than wood, lean into it. Okay, now what, now what? Let the fluid drain. What the actual, oh my days, she woke up. She woke up. When that engineer gets back to the South Pole, then I'm sure he has a job in brain surgery. I actually wanted to be a neurosurgeon at one point in med school, and one of my bosses famously said, I can train a monkey to operate, but I can't train it to do it at 4 a.m. with no sleep. After watching an operation that lasted 16 hours and the surgeon took one pee break, I decided it probably wasn't for me. This episode is absolutely wild. Now, this means that her constellation of symptoms are raised pressure to the brain, punctured lung, lymph nodes, and tummy and chest pain as well. It's starting to look like could be a hormone releasing cancer that's spiking up her water retention leading to the raised pressure in the brain. My last diagnostic guess will therefore have to be an adrenal cancer with paraneoplastic syndrome. We are locked in. What's going on? So we ruled out cancer. But not clots. What if the clots aren't clots? Atherosclerosis. Clot. Could be a different kind of fat, fat emboli. Fat emboli requires an unrepaired bone breaking. See, that's what I'm talking about. Take off her socks. Your toe is broken. Bits of bone marrow have been leaking into your bloodstream. Those fat emboli have caused blockages. You'll need to close the break to stop the marrow from leaking. Thank you, House. Why is it so pain? Fine. Sorry, I'm late. Cutthroat bitch? That was cold. The patient was physically with the mechanic 
but her eyes were quite literally 8,000 miles away. What a crazy episode, definitely dropped a few accuracy points at the end there, though as fat embolism to the lungs would cause breathlessness because of lack of oxygen transfer, not organ collapse. It also basically has no way of going from the toe to the kidneys, as the fat would have to travel along the veins first and then get stuck in the lung or the liver before even having a chance to get to the kidneys. Insane storyline though and loved this twisted romance part for the extra spice. So 8.6 out of 10 entertainment, 6 out of 10 accuracy, 8 out of 10 diagnosis. The classic people who get air in the longer young tall men with spontaneous pneumothoraxes. This episode doesn't make full sense until you watch the previous one where a mother can't lie here. 